Glory to Ukraine. Today we have the November 10th, 260 days of Ukrainian heroic repulse against Russian aggression. Welcome at the military media center and we are about to start our weekly briefing about the security situation in Ukraine. Today we invited Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Hanna Maler, Deputy Head of the Main Operations Directorate of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Brigadier General Oleksiy Hromov, Acting Director of the Implementation Planning Department of the Main Directorate of the National Guard of Ukraine, Colonel Mykola Ushilovich, as well as Security Forces of Ukraine Speaker. speaker. Good morning, everyone. We are starting our weekly briefing of the Defense Forces. We stay united at all front lines, both at informational as well. Today we have 260 days of heroic confrontation of Ukrainians against Russian aggression. Our fight against the enemy is lasting for 37 weeks. The situation is difficult in all front lines. We have heavy fighting. However, our defenders struggle and engage the enemy. More today you will hear more information about information on the front lines from the representatives of the National Guard and the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. I want to note how united our people has have become and the enemy will not fear us. We restore lives on the liberated territories and communicate with our people on the temporarily occupied territories that we remember everyone. Our defense forces are trying to do their best to give you an opportunity to come back as soon as possible, as well as to regain control of the territories. That is why we ask you to support defense forces on the temporarily occupied territories, as well as to do not cooperate with the enemy and struggle. We also ask you to fight against the enemy wherever is possible. And every our territories will be liberated. And the evil which have, has come to our territory will be punished. I also want to send my message to warriors who are captured and in prison of the Russian Federation. We remember you and we will liberate you. Every prisoner's exchange is a result of a painstaking work of a great team of our uniform structures. Prisoner's exchange is not a, is not a mathematical result and it's not to be compared. That is why we struggle and fight for everyone and want to do everything possible to bring them back to our homeland. This is a very sensitive topic and if you want to help liberate our servicemen faster, let us do our job. And if you have some information, please contact our coordination headquarters on prisoners exchange. This dynamic in this process is tangible. And that is why we all we always provide contacts and information to state institutions where you can send personal data of your relatives who are missing. We can also find this data on the website of the Minist Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Thanks to 
everyone who is not tired to protect Ukraine and protect Ukraine is not only about territory but also about values. That is why we thank to everyone who since February 24 chose their path to fight for victory and independence. And it's not only about our defenders and servicemen, but also about all Ukrainians, both in enemy held and liberated territories. And it's also about Ukrainians who are abroad and who are on the temporarily occupied territories. Everyone is fight fighting for Ukraine now. Every week we also discuss and talk about the situation on the temporarily occupied territories, which is provided from the main intelligence directorate of the Minister, Minister of Defense of Ukraine. R Russian, the Russian Federation continues to perform partial mobilization. And as for the first decade of November, 270,000 out of 300,000 servicemen have been mobilized. Russian forces face logistical problems with logistics, instructors, training facilities as well. At the same time, and the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine, Russian invaders continue to create artificial conditions where locals are forced to flee. In addition, in living quarters of Kherson region, the enemy is establishing fire artillery positions directly in living quarters, as well as trying to erect fortifications, thus destroying private houses of citizens. In addition, we also see lots of cases where shops, markets are being closed right now. In fact, our people who are forcibly living on the temporary territories are in the, the state of humanitarian catastrophe. Russian invaders also destroy communications infrastructure. In addition, they also dismount cellular network facilities and seize Wi-Fi rovers. Under the guise of martial law, Russian authorities also is also engaged in looting of material values and historical as well. As. It has been identified that the occupiers looted the Kherson Art Museum named after Shukovenko and stole pieces of art as well. Every week we also inform you about the support of the armed forces of Ukraine, performed by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. I want to recall that we are talking about the previous week. That is why from November 2 to November 9, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine transferred more than 4,000 armor vests, 6,000 helmets, and more than 26,000 winter footwear. As for the winter jackets, we registered more than 70,000 winter jackets. We also transferred for the needs of the armed forces of Ukraine more than 66,000 of winter pants, more than 142,000 hats, winter hats, more than 29,000 of fleece jackets, as well as more than 112 demi-season demi and winter underwear. We also maintain a reserve of 200,000 armor vests and 100,000 helmets. We also we are also engaged in the process of issuing and transferring this equipment. The Minister of Defense of Ukraine has already sent enough pieces of uniform 
for the needs of the armed forces of Ukraine. The only issue is the distribution and logistics, logistician issues within the tro troops in the field. And I want to say that uh, this situation is difficult because of the hostilities and combat actions that are all going on in Ukraine and the uh, problems with infrastructure are also playing their role in that. However, we are going to check this issue unless er until every serviceman gets its uniform. As for the payment, as for the payment, the previous week was a period and a week of a standstill, if I can call this. The Minister of Defense of Ukraine performed payments in 100% value, and I'm talking about monthly payment of salary as well as payment, additional payment for service under martial law, 30,000 hryvnia. And now we are also tracking and processing the issue with the payment of combat payments of 100,000 hryvnias per month. We also perform payments to families of killed in actions. We also have a standing procedure for this and we don't think it has to be simplified because it's working and we have legal basis for everyone and for every relative of the soldier killed in action to get the payment. We're also talking about our legal victories and I want to say one more time that the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine is carrying out its policy to bring back, bring back facilities which have been transferred to other institutions uh, of Ukraine illegally. As for in terms of legal issues, we also have a solution, a positive solution for the armed forces, for the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine of 4.2 million hryvnias of fine sanctions for providing inadequate services. The enterprise, which will not, which name will not cover, pro provided inadequate services concerning repair and maintenance of equipment. That is why the Minister of Defense is carefully tracking for every services are being completely fulfilled. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Hanna Maler. Now we welcome the representative of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Brigadier General Oleksiy Hromov. Good morning, everyone. As for November 10, we haven't seen any abrupt ch changes in the operational situation. The main efforts are being concentrated by the Russian forces on the occupation of our state. Despite the intensity of missile attacks, the enemy still continues the terror tactics and is trying to destroy the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. Despite public claims of the Kremlin, the Russian aggressor state continues its mobilization measures.
Thus, in several regions, the Russian Federation officers of military recruitment centers issue call-up papers to men and force them to come to their centers in order to replenish losses in weapons and equipment. Russia resorts to Belarus, North Korea and Iran. The Ukrainian Defense Forces continue to liberate Ukrainian land from the invaders. Thus, in Luhansk region, only for the last day, our units were able to advance for up to two kilometers. Ukrainian Defense Forces continue actions in Mykolaiv and Kherson regions. I want to emphasize that every goodwill gesture of the enemy is achieved by the tremendous efforts of our troops. When they withdrew from Kyiv and Kharkiv and other regions, as well as the Snake Island, the situation is the same. This is the result of our active actions. As for now, we cannot approve and disapprove any information about the withdrawal of Russian troops from Kherson. And we continue to do our job and our offensive according to our plan. In general, during this week, we had, we have seen 347 clashes and in countries. The enemy engaged 32 missiles and 134 aviation strikes. In Volin, Zhutomir and Kyiv, the direction of the situation is stable. On the territory of the Republic of Belarus, we see the continuous actions of deployment of regional group of forces. The appropriate uniform structures and other local government agencies, the Republic of Belarus continue measures to train and receive Russian military contingent. In Chernihiv and Sumer direction, then he performed over 40 disturbing fires from mortars and other artillery assets. Then we engaged civilian infrastructure in the vicinity of three settlements in Chernihiv and 13 settlements in Sumer region. In, Har in Kharkiv direction, the enemy engaged Berestvo, Novoselivske, Termachika and Andriyuka with no success. The enemy also used missiles in Staroverivka, Kupensk, Pishchane, Kruhlakivka and other aviation strikes in Basova, Kislyuka, Pishchane, Barestva, Novosarevske and Stalmachike. The most difficult situation is in Donetsk area. In the month direction, the enemy performed assault and advance actions in Makivka, Torske, Pilohorivka and Spirna, however, with no success. The enemy also engaged by missiles our positions and civilian infrastructure inf installations in Leman, Tibrova and Kramatorsk areas, as well as aviation directions strikes in the areas of Makivka, Terne, Pilohorivka and Spirna. In Bakhmut direction, the enemy performed offensive actions in Berestovo, Yakovlivka, Solodar, Bakhmut, Ivanograd, Klishivka, Ozarinivka, Majorsk. The enemy engaged by missiles in Druzhivka and aviation strikes in Yakovlivka, Solodar and Bakhmut. In general, we can say that the enemy sustains heavy losses. During the last day, only in Bakhmut direction, the enemy private military company sustained losses in 138 personnel, 40 KA, and the rest are wounded. In Avdiivka and Novopavlisk direction, the enemy performed Offensive actions in Novokalenove, Krasnogorivka, Kamenka, Opetne, Peromaiske, 
Neverske, Marinka, Novo Mikhailovka and Pavlyuka. The enemy engaged by aviation in 12 settlements. In the Zaporizhia direction, the enemy performed offensive and uh, advancement actions in the vicinity of Sherbaki. The enemy engaged by missiles in Huleipole, Kuschove, Lezhene, Zaporizhia, Vilyansk and aviation strikes in Zaliznechne, Sharivne, Bilohirya, Sherbaki, Mali Sherbaki and Stepove. Since the beginning of this week, the enemy engaged by missiles in Kherson direction the following areas Sofievka, Zolotabalka, Telefonivka, Vesukopilia, Arhangelsk, Bashtelunka, and 31 aviation strikes against our positions in the vicinity of nine. Settlements. The enemy also launched 17 missiles and 50 UAVs against the territory of Ukraine, including 44%, 44% of missiles and 64% of UAVs have been destroyed. The enemy also performs aviation and air defense strikes against Ukrainian territory. However, 53 air targets have been destroyed. Ukrainian defense forces fight and professionally defend our territory. However, every liberated settlement and every kilometer is reached by blood and the highest price life and health of our warriors. Believe in the armed forces of Ukraine, believe in the victory of Ukraine and join in our ranks. Thank you to your attention. Glory to Ukraine. We thank thanks to the representative of the General Staff of Ukraine, Brigadier General Brigadier General Oleksy Hromov. And now, welcome Colonel Mikola Oshalovich, the representative of the National Guard of Ukraine. Good morning, everyone. Now we are we will be briefly we will be briefly informed as for the role and place of the National Guard of Ukraine as of November 10th. The National Guard of Ukraine alongside the armed forces of Ukraine and other components of the security and defense sector, despite the enemy advantage in material and personnel, ensures protection of the state against the armor, armed aggression of the Russian Federation. The main efforts of the National Guard units have been concentrated on the maneuver defense in Kupinsk, Slovyansk, Bakhmut, Siversk, Avdiivka, Novopavlis direction, performing stabilization and preventive measures on the liberated territories of Ukraine and participation in anti-terroristic and counter sabotage measures in maintaining the martial law regime on the territory of Ukraine, both including cover and protection of the state border of Ukraine. During the last week, the enemy tried to perform suicide attempts to assault National Guard of Ukraine at positions in Bakhmut and Novopavlyske direction. All the attacks have been repelled, and the enemy didn't achieve any success in advance. However, it sustained critical losses. As a result, our reconnaissance servicemen record the high level of cynicism and the degrading attitude of Russian forces to their servicemen. Their killed bodies are not being picked from the battlefield. This events and measures are well spread. The constant reconnaissance by force attempts prove the low level of equipment and manning of the enemy positions in Bakhmut directions and in other areas. As a result of the intensive combat actions, the National Guard destroyed 11 tanks, 12 
armored fighting vehicles, one ammunition dump, as well as manpower and other material. The special purpose units of the National Guard during defense and reconnaissance actions performed their actions in Vodyane, Avdiivka, Pavlyuka, Veleka, Novosilka, Krivoshevka. The special purpose and artillery of the National Guard performing tasks of fire support during the maneuver defense in Bakhmut and Zaporizhia directions also were able to perform 140 fire attacks. Our artillery of Kharkiv, Colonel Petro Bolbachan Brigade engaged the enemy positions with special propaganda rounds with letters to call Russian troops to save their lines and flee or to surrender. Our reconnaissance assets detected 358 targets of the enemy. Thus, on November 5, during the aerial reconnaissance in the Parisian direction, the electronic warfare R-300 RP system Polar 21 has been detected. National Guard Aviation National Guard Aviation continues to perform 13 combat flights and engage the enemy. We also maintain measures uh, to perform measures of maintaining legal regime of the martial law in 19 regions of Ukraine on 169 checkpoints as well as 379 self-contained mounted and dismounted patrols where we engage more than 6,000 of servicemen. During the last week, the National Guard officers also apprehended 1,347 people. Thus, on November 2, on the Kyiv checkpoint, one citizen, one female citizen of Ukraine has been detained. She had a cell phone with photos and Russian symbology, as well as other greed she was about to send to the enemy. Despite less, intense, despite less intensity of artillery and missile attacks on the territory of Ukraine, including the infrastructure of Ukraine, the National Guard specialists show creative and genuine efforts and actions of mounting 7.62 mm machine gun mounted on the truck of the vehicle. On November 3, we had a regular prisoner exchange between Ukraine and Russia. 107 Ukrainians have, been, have come back home, including 33, representati 33 representatives of the National Guard of Ukraine. All liberated personnel is being provided with help. This week, at the prisoners, prisoners of War Treatment Coordination Headquarters, we had a meeting with the relatives of the National Guard servicemen. We raised some issues on the information concerning prisoners exchange between relatives of the prisoners of war and state installations. To improve this process, we have created calls, a call center on prisoners of war issues of the National Guard of Ukraine. We also call relatives and dependents to call and contact hotline of the National Guard of Ukraine or to military units where their relatives serve.
This week, the National Guard of Ukraine delivered 74 tons of humanitarian assistance to Mykolaiv citizens. This assistance is being integrated from the Latvian Republic and it was supported by the Ambassador of Latvia in Ukraine and the uh, defense attache, as, as well as other civilian military cooperation National Guard Directorate of Ukraine. I want to thank our partners for that. Glory to Ukraine and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Colonel Urshalovich, for this information and the uh, National Guard for their dedicated work and fight. And now, please welcome Artem Dekhtarenko, the representative of the Security Service of Ukraine. Good morning, everyone, your guests. Today I am about to talk about the fight of the collaborators. This is our priority right now and we work not only to cover the traitors but also to perform and gather legal basis to help them in prison. Thus, since the beginning of the full-scale armed aggression, the security service of Ukraine covered almost 700 servicemen, according to the criminal code of, the, of Ukraine. Thus, in this case, despite the state traitors, we are talking about the uh, collaborators. In order to understand who these people are, I want to give you some examples. The first one is Sumy region. At the beginning of the full-scale invasion, only one man called and gathered almost 120 units of tanks, armored vehicles, etc. As soon as the Russian convoys crossed the border, this person contacted them personally. After the Russian forces fled, this man also tried to cross the border. Another example is the judge of the temporary peninsula restore the practice of people's deportation. At the same time, it was, he was sued and had to be held accountable for his actions. And such examples we see more than 700. Including these cases we have sent more than 100 to the courts. Including that, as for 53 violators and criminals, we have a progress in the cooperation with the Russian Federation. One person has been sued to 12 years of imprisonment for his co cooperation with the Russian forces. And I want to say that these collaborators can count only criminal punishment for their work. We can also say that these collaborators have not tangible result and responsibility for their actions. We have this practice on the newly liberated and deoccupied territories, namely in Kharkiv, Kherson, Luhansk. Donetsk and the other regions, we have covered more than 120 collaborators. To sum up, I want to say that the security service of Ukraine knows everyone and every data of those who 
collaborate and cooperate with the Russian forces and the issue of their of holding them uncomfortable is only the issue of time. Thank you. Thank you, Artem Dekhtarenko, for his information of the security service of Ukraine. And now we are ready to take your questions. I want to invite our speakers and we are ready to answer your questions. We have a microphone in the hall, so please raise your hand and ask a question. Good afternoon, Nikita Halka. Today we have a video that the 131st Battalion, reconnaissance battalions of the armed forces of Ukraine occupied and took the village of Snihurivka. Can you prove this information? The armed forces of Ukraine continue to liberate the temporarily occupied territories in Mykolaiv, Kherson, Kharkiv and other regions. The operation is going according to our plan and continuously we liberate settlements. However, as for the liber completely liberation of settlements and other retention measures, you will be informed by the official report of the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine. Thank you. And the next question is related to Kherson. And I can we know that not any information can be covered, but do you possess any information about any um, enemy movement on the right bank of Dnipro? Dnipro and what actions uh, the enemy tries to resort? The information I have already said, Ukraine form. I have three questions to three speakers. The first one is to Mr. Romov. Did the enemy, did the enemy resorted and address the armed forces of Ukraine to provide the green corridor? The question to Hanna Maler is uh, about collaboration and actions of uh, Change in uniform in Kherson region. Can you approve that? And the third question is to Artem Dekhtarenko. Uh, do you have any issues and information about the collaborators in Kherson region? As for our information, we haven't seen any calls from the Russian forces to provide green corridor. On the temporarily occupied territories, and according to our law, our structures perform their duties and responsibilities to save their our statehood and restoring our territorial integ integrity. We cannot disclose and say what they are doing there and how it's being performed. However, every collaborator, we know every collaborator and we have personal personal information about collaborators and our law enforcement bodies know how many collaborators are there and unlike 2014 the situation is completely different concerning local population concerning those who are forcibly stationed there these people risking their own lives, struggle, and they fight. And we remember everyone, and we are grateful for you, to you for that. As for the question concerning enterprises you asked, we perform decisions and other solutions to gain these enterprises under governmental control. However, we also have some uh, working restrictions performed by the processual code. 
Do we have any questions? Army inform. Question is to Hanna Maller. Uh, we have constant information about Russian, Russia writing to perform negotiations. What do you think is behind this move? We have a clear view of inability and an activity of Russian forces to negotiate. From our side, we have many times said and mentioned that the negotiations, negotiations are possible after the withdrawal of Russian troops out of temporarily occupied and li temporarily occupied territories. And only after that we will discuss this. Thank you. Army inform. The question is to Hanna Mayer. How would you evaluate these smoke and mirrors where the Russian Federation top officials talked and discussed the withdrawal from Kherson? As for the evaluation, evaluation, I can provide several point of views. The first is that we cannot trust Russians and we have been convinced many times about that and thus they are trying to deceive us. The next, the next one is the point of view of propaganda and this is the example issued example case and this theater have been performed in a very posh way and yes these are messages and signals how Russian authorities are giving and providing to their citizens and we however we remind one more time that we do not trust the words and actions of the Russian Federation and the next question is to Brigadier General Romov now uh, Russian forces prepare the fortifications as a Wagner line for how long and how much can it stop the liberation yes I agree the fortification the fortifications are designed to stop or to hinge the enemy movement However, throughout the history we saw many examples where against every weapon, the countermeasure counter weapon have been manufactured. And yes, we have such systems to breach mine obstacles and fortifications. As for now, we check and examine how they establish their fortification line. However, I can say that we will approach it and we will breach it. Do we have any question? I have a question to Mikola Ushalovic. In your previous reports you talked and discussed that National Guard representatives took uh, Wagner representatives and the servicemen of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. During this week did we have the same results? Thank you for your question. Yes, I mentioned many times that such lucky gentlemen of Wagner group, former imprisoners, have been captured and we took them as prisoners. They also give up and surrenders, surrender. And the last, the, on the previous week, the National Guards tries to promote and foster this process thanks to their stability and heroism. And as I mentioned before, we also sent and delivered propaganda letters of how to surrender and be captured. However, we have However, we have some problems because our artillery servicemen can confuse the artillery shells and high explosive shells. Thank you. And the next question is that during the continuous actions, our forces and servicemen face psychological problems. 
what measures the National Guard Directorate performs to maintain the proper level of psychological health of servicemen. Yes, according to our national physical and psychological health and mental health of servicemen, the National Guard continues to the National Guard continues to perform such measures and during the last week the National Guard had these measures taken for 600 servicemen and these rehabilitation measures are performed also according to the decompression program. This program is performed when the units or servicemen of the National Guard come back and return from the combat action areas to relieve tension and combat stress and also bring them to normal life. Thank you. Do we have any questions? The question is to Artem Dekhtarenko. What is the effect of such criminal proceedings uh, against the enemy collaborators? Yes, this is a very interesting uh, question and that is why the security service of Ukraine continues to work in this direction. From the At first, the security service of Ukraine detectives gather judicial and legal basis. Then we also issue this matter of of suspicion and then we perform search and search measures or spread the suspicion to other countries where the collaborators are hiding and thus Russia is being transferred and changed into the prison state. Thank you. Do we have any questions? No, if you have no questions, thanks. we thank our speakers. Uh, this is Military Media Center, the only communication platform of the security and defense sector. See you next week.